Hello, my name is David Hartful from Black Leadership Analysis, and today I want to talk to you about the Civil Rights Commission's rebuttal to the McCone Commission's report. The Civil Rights Act of 1957 created the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. This commission had several subcommittees all over the country. One of the subcommittees was the Southern California Subcommittee, and they evaluated the McCone Commission's report on what caused the Watts riots. They found the report woefully insufficient in effectiveness and depth of solutions. In addition, the McCone Commission never evaluated any use using federal funds to tackle any of the problems. The failure of the McCone Commission was especially troublesome since they had a quarter million dollars and 71 people. The subcommittee wrote this critique to help fill in the gaps of the McCone Commission report. The McCone Commission prescribed aspirin when surgery was needed. The policy proposals were unimaginable, unimaginative and seemed stymied by what they thought politically possible at the time. The commission was to create bold plans to push policymakers to strive for a better community. Gross negligence of the Los Angeles government when warned of upcoming riot was inexcusable. Many studies were warning of, warning of civil unrest coming soon. Police Chief Parker denied there was even a problem in police community relations. Mayor Yorty spent much of his time outside of Los Angeles building political connections to proving the city he was in charge of at the moment. The commission also used language that people felt affronted by oppression and not that they were actually oppressed. For example, Proposition 14 essentially legalized housing discrimination. Black people were justifiably angry. They did not feel oppressed or affronted. The same can be said about commission's evaluation of police malpractice and other issues in the report. In the end, there needs to be affirmative action to remedy these societal problems. The McCone Commission never gathered data to analyze for police brutality. They simply assumed it wasn't a large scale problem and moved on from there. Many black Angelinos complained about the police and their complaints were ignored. This proves the protest is correct in their anger. The protesters were chastised for disturbing the peace of the community while ignoring the fact that there were legitimate issues to be angry about. They even went so far as to say protesters consumed too many police resources and left the rest of the city in danger. There was no discussion of changing police attitudes or building better police community relations. There was also no mention of an invasion of a Muslim temple. Many black Angelinos saw this police action as an infringement on their First Amendment rights. Lieutenant Governor Anderson was defended in the committee's critique. The commission report insinuated Anderson drug his feet in calling the National Guard. It turns out Anderson's actions reduced response time by only two hours at the maximum. Also, his reluctance to call the National Guard was warranted. All 34 deaths of the uprising happened after the National Guard was called. Government and business relationships cause segregation, not personal choices, as, as stated in the report. The committee recommended taking affirmative action to integrate various neighborhoods. These actions include regulating blacks to incentivize them loaning money to black people wanting to move to white neighborhoods. Also, the government should end agreements not to sell to blacks uh, called housing covenants. The commission's report on education focused on improving black schools and not integration. In this way, they're very much the same as Southerners trying to fight integration. New schools should be built in areas that attract both black and white students. The plan to decrease unemployment was also inadequate. Automation is taking over many of the jobs the commission planned to train people for. There should be a focus on future jobs. In addition, the older workforce needs to be the center of the training because they are already heading families. By stabilizing them, you stabilize the entire community, killing many birds with one stone. The McComb Commission also insinuated blacks were moving to LA for more gener generous welfare benefits. This assertion was not supported by any facts and reinforces racist stereotypes. It also undermines public confidence in the welfare program. A federal study can aid to debunk these myths and aid in building a plan forward.
The commission report did not detail how federal funds and resources could be used to fix many of these problems. The commission's solutions were a good start, but they were not comprehensive. Presenting them as a comprehensive solution was dangerous because people would see little change and then lose confidence in social programs. The committee also wanted to have Civil, uh, the Civil Rights Committee also wanted to have hearings on police community relations. The committee recommended a federal agent oversee the implementation of the McComb Plan and evaluate if federal funds could be used in helping the implementation. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my written blog at wordpress.com. Also, if you found this work valuable, please give through PayPal at sdandrace at gmail.com.